peaceful, anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Van Van, today's lunch will be prepared. Ashleen, Viva, timed, competitive cook-off. Hmm. The man that they stop wasting everybody's time. Step up and tell them you're on. Level of tactics with these two is off the charts. Yeah, mine for a challenge. Let's go for it. Gazillion. A bit of time, lunchtime competition, eh? Come in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool. Fool. Colonel Sanders, he loved that choice. Good one, Van Van. I like your Grumpton. Gazillion. Grumpton? Colonel Sanders, I'll be watching your performance. Let's do well, guys. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Oh no, he seems angry at me still. Sprinkles, now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportizing court. Find your little sense. You breathe a sign of relief. Sprinkles, at least not until we turn on the timer. Timer? Is the timer ready? Just then a huge light bursts in the face, flashing the words time already. Wrinkles, that's what I'm talking about. Aroo! I stand corrected. Colonel Sanders, the hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. I think he's trying to give me confidence. And then there's an original quote by me. In case anyone was wondering, I hope it's the message that lifts you to victory. Ashleen, like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You and this chicken, and you make the mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here? Okay. I think I'm talking to myself. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does boil at? 100 C's? That's right. But how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? So I'm, I'm running on a timer. I'm going to have to answer this question. Winner gets to rub my fairy belly. Let's let that in entrancing offer motivate you you're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it you don't know Colonel Sanders recipe exactly you have an idea how many herbs and spices they used seven seven wrong oh no I've been with butter I've been I've seen sumers with better sense than that, and the mi miniature kind, no less. I don't know what that is. Now that you've gotten basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Trust, gratitude, vigilance. Oh no, I got that. Timed out. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. Next question. Clamor. Your classmates, your classmates, your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from his, from that place, the small town where big dreams are born. Okay, small town. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. This must have, these answers must have come out in the game, and I didn't realize. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of sizzling? 
That's strong. No. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Is this the end? Don't make me get the spray bottle. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to s s get a dead end. Yep. Try again. Oh, I got those answers so wrong. Oh, got those answers way wrong. So how many spices is not? 10, seven. So it could be 11, let's try 11. Going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know kind of sand is recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Okay, let's try 11 spices. 11. That's right, you might not know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're heading in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. Uh, trust? Wrong. Oh no. I'm begging to get it together, get it. I'm a dog, it's never the wrong time. Or oh, dog jokes. Next question. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. Were you a child? When you were a child, your father told you to forget. Never forget where you came from every day. You meditate on his voice and draw energy from that place. That's the one. Got that right last time. That's right. This is your shot and you're going not to miss it. Aroo! You try and shut out the noise of arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of cess? Uh, silence? Bubbling. That's wrong. Oh no. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question. You know it's going to send us out the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Kazillion. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. Well, how many spoons of gravy would it take for the traditional? Oh my god, that question was so quick, I didn't even have time to read it. You were thinking, get your mind back to the competition. Grrr. You s you're stranded on a desert island with only one desert dessert cookbook. Which do you take? Okay, you're stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a, what a hunk! Oh no. Uh, am I right? To know what? Shouldn't you be focused on chance you're falling behind? Oh no. Oh, Santa's writing together a girl. That's it. No, I got that wrong. I can't read that fast. <laughs> what does it have to do with crafting speculative fried chicken and delicate bit? Uh, woof woof. You're really struggling. Keep up. The next station over. Ashley has already begun plating elements of a dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a sand mixer. As you do, the crowd grasps. Yikes. Just clunk. They put Miriam, I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in the kitchen battle, but sometimes that makes sacrifice in the practical touch. Clank, please. Miriam, you might not have any hands, but Kazillion does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. Colonel Sanders. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. Oh, I don't think I'm impressing him. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You merely shove your hands into the mixer, rest of the dough before it's overcooked. I'm gonna chop my hands off. Miriam, Kazelia, no! But you're not fast enough, and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by glee spinning. Beaters, there's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Oh, this is going west to west. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. Colonel Sanders, what you often find is that easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. That's true. Sprinkles, can I do a do-over? Everyone, stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. No, you weren't. Wrinkles. Sweetheart, look at your hand, you simply can't go on. Ashleen. Hey, that's too bad, and here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. 
wrinkles. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Cassinian's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he lo lo locks onto the dish. Sprinkles. Well, I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Ashleen. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you will find a, a wide range of delights taking you on a journey of flavour that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. This is good. That's actually pretty cool. What is it, ice cream? Ashleen. I was going to ask Cillian to do the honour, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this cream uh, of Delco hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Ashley. Gunnar Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strength. Steady hand. Gunnar Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients held within. Wow, okay. Ashley, inside you find a delicate fried cheese. Croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two layers, two ways, tender nugget and petals of a blueberry jelly. I don't know what that is. It looks sweet. Really, it looks nice. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Was I meant to lose this? Cassandra, simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashleen? <gasps> oh, Ashleen. Oh, you. He, he, he. Oh, at least no timer. As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashleen leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his moustache. You intensify the rage you feel. You internalize the rage you feel. Put yourself between Cassandra's and Ashleen. Uh, Internalize. Prop best. Your rage burns so intensely with your eyes that they burst into flames. Well, that's not good. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch on fire and turn to ash. Ash, Ashleen. And they fall off. Your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Look at look on his face. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to peel on. It's not a good day. The beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you. A storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders, who's probably here to tell you that he and Ashlyn are in love and have decided to get married. Whoa, 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 not that fast. And he won't even ask you to get his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. Not that bad, dude. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. Colonel Sanders, I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. Definitely, I need first aid. Cassillian. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I will never be a master chef. Colonel Sanders. Failure is part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? True saying, true saying. Exactly what I think, Colonel Sanders. Well, then, think again. I was always the man you've seen before you, enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, he didn't think much of himself. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. But I've walked over paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life. I failed as an obstetrician. An obstetrician he wanted to be. Wow, okay. 
I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. Oh, I get that. I get that. Opposition lawyer. Oh, I get that. I get that feeling from me. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I never knew. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. This okay. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it isn't all it's been. Hmm. Sounds like this guy really could use a hug. I use him. I tried to hug him last time and it was game over. Consanders, I resolved then that I was going to amount to something, no matter the hours of labor or money, would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure, it is honest, it is something that a humble man in a crisp white shoot can be proud of. Shoot. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. I don't call them misdeeds, you just met. Just weren't successful in certain things until you found your path. Pop. Yay! Just at the moment grows intimate. You're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Is it the spork monster? It's the spork monster. A battle scared. A battle scared from the night before you pair for the worst. Battle scarred from the night before you pair for the worst. Barok, Barok. It is, I know, I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... Spockmaster. I just want to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Okay. Nice guy. Monster problems, alright. Monster problems, am I right? Ah, oh, thanks, Bozork. Borok, I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that your strong and cooking soup can be put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to the school. I was always a spoke monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Oh, this is probably a cooking accent turned him into a spoke monster. Well, no. I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Well, you could have been, you no know, Sp Spock's brother? Sprinkle's brother or something relative. Until one day, some... Mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book. Spicely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you shouldn't be... No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear, I'll be here. Colonel Sanders. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life, Gazillion. Together, I'm sure you can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss... Wow, okay. I'm coming. <laughs> a personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Oh, that's a little rooster. Oh, I like this little fire going in. Lake. 
Sim as a baby with his beard, riding a camel. Maybe that's his granddad. So, and okay, stepping inside Anders' home, stranded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. Looks like you live such an exciting life, Connor Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm all excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there's something, it's just a side dish I've been think tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Gunnar Sanders' eyes perk up as you start to wonder what dish you might be describing. Gunnar Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps. Now have you got him right where you want him? Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Now reveal it. I can trust this guy. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in headfirst. You reach into your lunch bag or a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original corso. Ah, uh, corso, it's uh, one of the finger licking uh, KFC things, food types. The shredded cabbage dish. Glitions in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux. Lux? Hide away. He loves it. Magnificent. Together you chomp down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. We work well together. Colonel Sanders, do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. Job, buddy. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Why? Sure, why not? No, son. Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. Really, as now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. What? Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories, radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. Cool. A chicken. Got it. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. Realistic. It's real. It's a real chicken. Taxidermy must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note chipped to the clip to the chicken's foot reads the true statement bird of the great state of Kentucky. The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on an item to discover more about the Colonel. Oh, what's this? It's here come. A lock of silver hair is worn through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize the hair therein isn't just silvery in color, it's actually made of spawn silver. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. This candle, a scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar, collar, a piece of wood floating in a lake, smell of 69, oh it's one of the secret recipe ingredients, it's 
It's one of the secret recipe ingredients, it's... Am I meant to remember these? Tap on item, discover more about the kernel. Okay. You take closer learn, look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. Tap on the okay? Oh, step on the lake. Gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. The ghost of student? Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window. I crank. You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. Mm, sad times, student. I look at these pictures. Baby picture. A durable little baby crawls across the floor. From that goatee and moustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. Oh, he's got some, uh, of testosterone if he's growing that beard. And he loves chicken from birth. Okay. And he's wearing glasses. Okay. Maybe that, or maybe it's a drumstick that he seems to be wheeling like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, alright? Tap an eye to go, okay. The photo piece to be Colonel Sanders, except that he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of the secret herbs and spices. This must be a relative, <laughs> or it's him from the future. One of the themed, one of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders, standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be ch cherishing them. Cheering? Cheering them. Look closely and see there's a short inscription. Okay, I think I got everything in the room. I think it's bell. Let's press the bell. Must be where he keeps a secret recipe. You think of a mama what number is important to concern then it drones on you. As soon as you turn the dial to eleven eleven eleven, safe opens. Inside you find a single note. Ah, oh, secret recipe. Can check in be prepared? Sashwan style. You tap an item and discover more about the kernel. Well, I think there's only thing left. Ooh, it's soup. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off the hanger and try it on. <laughs> the jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. This is what they meant. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. <laughs> I'm wearing his coat. He likes it. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. You forget to take it off. You said that now it is your moment and you make a move. I don't know if he likes it. It's time you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. Let's tell him the truth. You confess. I think I developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel Sanders in the mist 
of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause, you stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Kazilian? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. Colonel Sanders, I think you're right. We should take things slow. Take them slow, buddy. I know. Last time I tried to kiss you, and you didn't like it. You take, you talk late into the night and drift off into slumber. Okay, I'm seeing the future again. Dream sequence. Z. This is nice. You wake into a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to approach Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. I don't know. So, blanked out. In some judifications, isn't even legal, but if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a glorious plated breakfast and your mouth waters the side of it. Colonel Sanders. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's delicious. You taste Colonel Sanders food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you say that we're the perfect match? Defo! How pr presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace, could he be the world's greatest gift to cook culinary? Gift to culinary? Cookery. <laughs> Take him down a peg. Flatter him. Yes, flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. Colonel Sanders. And with the right business part, I know I can't fail. Business part? Could it be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one one more day left of school. One more day of school. After all, the University of Culinary School Academy of Learning awaits for no one. I thought it was four days. 